Today we're talking about Hoverify, an extension for Chrome-based browsers that's currently on lifetime deal on AppSumo. So first of all, let's take a quick look at what's included, and then we'll take a look at the plan over on Hoverify before we move on and actually take a proper in-depth look at how everything works. So if we jump over to the Hoverify website and scroll through, you can see basically what we have are seven different features. An inspector and eyedropper are built with responsive assets, screenshots, and a debug option. We'll take a look at these in a moment. Let's jump down to the pricing. And you see currently, if you want to grab yourself Hoverify, it'll cost you $30 per year. And that gives you the ability to use it on three different browser installs. Now, obviously, you have to bear in mind that if you run Chrome and you run a sort of Edge and you run Firefox on one computer and you install it on three, that's your three licenses used up. So bear that in mind. However, if we jump over to AppSumo, you'll see we can currently grab ourselves a lifetime deal for $49 for the same plan, basically. So three active installs, and that's $49. And you can stack this if you want to, and that comes out at $49 per stack. In other words, per three browser licenses. So I've installed and activated Hoverify on my Chrome browser. So you see, once we do, we get this new entry in our browser over at the top, and it's our Hoverify option. So we click to open that up. You can see inside there are all those different options. So first of all, let's take a quick look at these two icons. The first one is it'll give us a list of all the keyboard shortcuts, should you want to use those. So they're all listed inside there. Secondly, we've got the options for our settings, and inside here we can go and enable or disable any of the features. Let's come back over and let's open up the Hoverify option. If we click on inspect, that will now give us a subsection of a ton of extra tools. So even though it looks like there's not a lot in here, there is an awful lot going on. So what we've got is the ability to check out guidelines. We can take a look at grids, CSS box, and so on. So first of all, let's click on guidelines. If we click on that, you see when we mouse over anything in our window, our browser window, we get this dialog box pop up and it highlights exactly what HTML element we're actually targeting. In this example, it's the H1. If we move up, you can see this targets the div. And if we take a look at the actual panel itself, and we can press the space bar at this point to kind of lock that into place, you'll see this now gives us information about the selector. It gives us information about the size of that, the colors, the typography that's being used, any classes associated with it. And if we look underneath, it gives us all of the CSS-based information to do with that specific selector. You can see this gives us the box size in colors, etc. It even gives us the media query information. This is pretty cool. And you can see if we want to change the view of this, and currently we've only got one class inside here, but if you may have multiple, like for example, if you're using WooCommerce, each kind of like button and element inside there can have lots of classes associated with it. This will list all the classes at the top. And if you want to change things over, change your view over, so you can kind of, instead of having everything just lumped into one box, you can use this option. And that will then show you all the pseudo classes associated with that specific selector. You can see things like your after and before. You can see we've got the GB container because this is using generate press and generate blocks. And again, you can see this breaks everything down, just break it down to component parts. If we come up to the top, you can see anywhere we've got this little color chip, we can literally click on that color chip and that will then copy that to our clipboard and we can then paste that wherever we want to and use it however we want. You've also got the typography or the font that's currently being used. And if we click on that, that will take us over in this example to Google Fonts and show us exactly which font is being used. You'll also notice at the top, we've got these three icons in this example. The first one allows us to grab all this and take it straight over to CodePen, at which point we can then have a play about with this with that code taken over for us without us having to mess about copying and pasting and so on. We can come back over, we can copy all of this if we want to, copy that to our clipboard and then use it as we see fit. And we can click on the X to close this down. So we click on that, that closes the box. We can also use the escape key on our keyboard. You'll also notice that we've got other options on here. For example, we've got grids. If we select that, that will put a bounding box around every single item on our particular page. So everything is highlighted. You can see we've got a box on it and we can still use the option to go over and just see exactly what's being used and where it's being used. You can disable that by simply clicking on the grids again or use the keyboard shortcut of H. You've also got CSS box, which will visualize the paddings and margin. So you can see as we hover over everything, it'll show us any padding, any margins, and still bring up this box that allows us to see exactly where and when everything is being used. And again, we can still use that space bar to kind of lock that in place, move over to the next element, click, use the space bar to lock that in place, and so on. Now you'll notice because we've chosen an image this time, we get even more information about this particular element. We can find the source, 
We can see it's using lazy load, any classes that are associated with it, the height and width, the source set, any sizes, and then underneath we've got any CSS that's associated with it. And again, we can break things down by just changing the options and see any pseudo classes that are being used. So let's get rid of those. We can simply press the escape. Let's come back up and open up a Hoverify one more time and open inspect. And you can see inside here, we've got fonts so we can find out exactly what typography is being used on this entire page, where it's being used and so on. You've got edit, which allows you to directly interact with the page itself. So for example, we can come into this and we can just add in wow, for example. You've got the color palette, which allows us to analyze the entire page and look at all the images, the colors, the photographs, everything like that. And we'll create a full color palette of shades and everything with all of the hexadecimal or RGB values listed for you. And then you can simply copy any of these and use those as you see fit, copy them, paste them however you want to. You've also got the option then to actually go ahead and trash. You can hide and remove various items. So if we enable this and we choose hide, for example, we can click on that and we say we don't want to show this image. We can click and the image is now being hidden. We can undo that. We'll just press the refresh. This time we'll choose remove and we'll click on the image and that will remove it. You can see now that changes things because the content around it was interacting with that image and therefore removing it takes out the HTML code and you can see the effects of it. So pretty cool. You can do things like that. Great if you want to test things, you know, sort of see how things interact and work. Pretty cool. You've also got a search option, which allows you to go and search through the entire page for any elements, tags, IDs, or classes. Great if you want to find where they are, so then you can see how they're being used and so on. You've also got custom CSS, which allows you to directly interact with the page by putting your own custom CSS directly inside here. And you've also got the same thing then for custom JavaScript. So really cool. And you can interact with the entire design live inside the browser window using these set of options inside the inspect panel. Next on the list, we have the color eyedropper. And as its name would suggest, this allows us to grab colors on the page. We can copy them, we can save them, we can view them, we can do a range of different things. So if we choose the pick color, we can come over any of the elements and you can see this now hovers over it, shows us what we're selecting, gives us the RGB and the hexadecimal colors. And if we want to get rid of that, we can press escape or we can click to kind of lock that in place and then move over to the next one. So for example, we may want to find out information about the colors being used in our typography. We can click and you can see this now keeps pins those little sort of windows to the design, at which point we can copy the RGB or the hexadecimal values directly from inside here. And if we come back up to the option and open things up, open our color eyedropper one more time, you can see inside here, this will show us any of the recently selected colors. So for example, if we come over and choose this dark gray, come back over, open up Hoverify and the color eyedropper, you can see that's now been added into our recent colors. And we can, if we want to, we can save these colors. We can copy them again from inside here using the RGB or hexadecimal values. Super quick and easy. And we can press the escape to get rid of all of those. We have assets next, and if we open this up, this gives us a range of different panels where we can see what images or what assets are being used in any given page. So you can see at the moment, we're looking at the images tab and we can, if we want to sort these by name and size, we can move over to the SVG tab. This will show us any SVG images. We've got video, so if there's any videos embedded in here, you'll see that information. And finally, we've got any Lottie animations. If we come back to the images, you can see we hover over any of these, we get the option to copy, or we can just simply go ahead and download it. Or we can use save all to just grab everything and just download all that as one zip file that we can then use. This is great if you're going to redesign a client site and you want a quick and easy way of just sort of grab all the assets off that page, you can do that directly inside this tool. Obviously, Please do make sure if you use something like this that you have the legal copyright to be able to access and use any of the images. So next on the list is probably one of the most useful features inside Hoverify when you're building a website, and that's the responsive option. And what this will do is this will open up a new tab and show us a range of different devices mobile devices, unless you create something unique yourself. And you can see this shows us what it will look like on a range of different devices. It'll give us information about the device name, the resolution that's being used. And as you see, if we scroll through, you can see this shows us a range of different devices, tablets, mobile phones, and so on. The nice thing about this though, is we can interact with any of these and will show us how it will look across all these devices. So for example, if we come over the galaxy and start to scroll up, you see everything scrolls accordingly. So we can visually see how this is different, this sort of scroll space, any kind of changes you kind of get, any kind of weird glitches going on on different devices. We kind of get a visual representation of that. 
We don't, don't just have the option to scroll up and down though. We can interact with elements. So if we click to open up the menu, you can see inside there, all of our menus open up and we can go ahead and we can choose a different page from inside there. For example, we go to events and you see all the devices now update. We can see the events and we can scroll up through and check what they're going to look like. We can also come over to the top right hand side and we can choose to enable or disable the frame. So this will kind of take any frames, any sort of like how an iPad would look, for example, take those distractions away and just leave us with the resolution and the size of the screen itself. We could put those back on. We can switch between portrait and landscape if we want to. We also go ahead and we can click plus and we can add our own devices. So we can add a device name, the width and height and the user agent that's going to be used. And then we can save those and create our own custom options. And finally, we've got the option for this, which allows us to go ahead and manage and reorder the devices. So if you've got things inside you, we don't care about targeting. We can simply delete them or we could just turn them off visually by using the little eye icon. Or we can actually edit those by clicking on the pencil icon. And you can see this is where we can access that information about the device name, the resolution and so on. So pretty cool that you can add your own in and there's already a bunch as part of this anyway. We now have the debug option. So if we open this up, this allows you to check various different values. You can see we can clear the cache from inside here. We can choose how far back we want to clear it. So if we're making changes and they're not being reflected, we can clear the cache directly inside here. And you can see we can clear the cache, cookies and local storage. We can click clean up. You know, you kind of get the picture. We go to the meta tags. This will then show us all the meta tags being used on this specific page. So the character set, you can see we're using UTF-8, any robots information and those kinds of things. So you can see we can scroll through, find out all the information we need, copy anything we want from you or copy all of the information. So if you are having a problem and you wanted to send this over to maybe, you know, you're outsourcing work and you have a problem, you want to send this information, you can copy that info, send it over. Links, this will then check through to make sure you have no dead links or any problems with your links on this particular page. And if you do, you can go ahead and tidy those up and sort any problems out. So this is great if you are finding you're getting some strange problems with links, you can run this and check it all. Your HSE or your HTML semantic elements, this will show you then all the semantic elements and if they're missing. So for example, you can see the header hasn't been set inside the HTML code. So we can see that we could go back, set that up inside the HTML, make sure that that is all done. And finally, you've got the spell check option. Currently, this only supports English, but if you're not using something like Grammarly, then you could use something like this to go through and check it out for yourself. If we click on check, you can see this tells us the number of mistakes. We can view it and we can see where it considers those mistakes to be. And obviously, you can choose to ignore those if you want, to, if you know they're correct. And it'll tell you where they're being used. So pretty cool. You've also got built with. Now, this is... Okay, it's a little bit hit and miss when it comes to the tech that's being used on a site. For example, you can see we can see hosting, the tech, the DNS and the SSL. So the tech, this is going to tell us all the different tools that are being used. And sometimes it doesn't come back with the right info. So for example, I'm pretty sure that Kyle, when he rebuilt the site recently, everything is done with generate press and generate blocks. But you can see this is actually showing oxygen builder for some of the widgets which I know Oxygen Builder was used before, so maybe there's some code left around somewhere inside you. It's kind of given a, a false reading, shall we say. But you can get a kind of good idea how a lot of this is working, any e-commerce, any frameworks. So you can see Generate Press is being used. Any CDNs, you can click and you can jump over to exactly where that's coming from. So for example, click on this. This will take us over and do a search for Generate Press. Quite useful. If we jump over then to the DNS, you can see this gives us all the DNS information, the A records, those kinds of things. And finally, the SSL, which will give us info about the SSL certificate that's applied as part of the site. Again, these are probably more advanced for some people. You know, you may have a use for this. A lot of people probably won't have any use for it, but it's handy that it's actually there. And then finally, we have the option for capture. Now, this is something that I do use quite a lot. This allows me to do things like full page capture, all tabs capture, visible parts, and so on. So I've been using a third-party Chrome extension to just grab the entire page because I use that in videos and so on. But you can see all I need to do if I want to grab the full page is click the full page. That will then scroll through the page for me, and it'll combine those images together to create one final mock-up of what that page looks like. And you can see there it is. And now we can come over this, hover over, and we can choose to save it as a PNG or as a JPEG, or we can save it as a, as a PDF or as a zip file. So that's pretty cool. But one of the things I do like about this is if you are creating a tutorial, for example, you may open multiple different tabs up to have different parts of the screen open at any given time. Well, what you can do with this is you can actually click on the all tabs, and that will then go ahead and create screen grabs of all of the different tabs that are available. 
So as you can see, that now screen grabs what you can see on screen, and then each one of those can be saved as a JPEG or a PNG, or you can save them as a PDF or a zip file, and all of those then combine into one. So that's pretty cool to see that. If you were doing a tutorial and you want to just grab all of those windows, you could do it really, really simply. So that in a nutshell is Hoverify. What do I think of the pricing though when it comes to the lifetime deal? Well, for me, I think it's a little bit mean that at $49 we only get three activations because if you are a web designer, chances are you're gonna have more than one Chrome-based browser. You may be using Edge if you're on Windows, you may have Firefox installed, and you may have Chrome, and you may have two machines. Well, $100 for something like that for what is a nice to have, but I think for a lot of use cases, you know, there are free plugins out there or the free extensions out there that do a lot of what you can do inside Hoverify. It does make it a little bit of a hard sell. However, I think if you only use the one browser and you have multiple machines using the same browser, this may be something you want to check out. I've grabbed the deal. I'm going to keep this because it replaces a couple of different Chrome extensions that I'm using on a pretty much daily basis. So it's going to make life a little bit easier for me just to have one location to do all of that. But I'd love to know what your thoughts are. Have you grabbed Hoverify? Are you interested in it? Or is this the first time you've seen anything to do with it? Let me know in the comments section down below. All the applicable links are in the description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tets. And until next time, take care.